So thank you all for having me. Um, today we're going to talk about collaboration innovation and how InterSource Commons and uh, Red Hat are working together. So let's get started. Um, I I cannot get this to go. I am Tracy Buckner, and I work in the OSPO at Red Hat. I've been there for about a year, but I've been at Red Hat for a little over eight years. I'm located in Raleigh, but I tell everybody and my accent tells you that my heart is in West Virginia. That's where my family is and where I grew up. I'm a mom to three plus one because I'm raising my granddaughter now. I'm a writer. I'm a rule follower, and I'm an eternal optimist, so you could probably say I'm pretty type A. So I wanted to talk to you today about the challenge that we were facing at Red Hat. All of a sudden, we had people from our field coming to us, and they were saying things like, how does InterSource relate to open source? What is InterSource? What are some companies that have successfully implemented InterSource? How can we help the companies that are our customers get started with InterSource? Are there any tools or techniques or anything that can help them with InterSource? And those were a lot of great questions. And I did what I always do. Um, I went to Google. And so I Googled InterSource and I came across InterSource Commons and I was immediately fascinated. I love research and I love reading and I love learning. So this was right up my alley. And I started looking at InterSource Commons and was just amazed at the information that they had. And I mentioned it to my boss and my boss said, oh, yeah, they've been reaching out to us to collaborate. We should work more with them and see how we can collaborate with them. And I was so excited that our past had kind of came together and we were able to work with InterSource Commons. And so when we first got started, the solution was that InterSource Commons had all this great information and it was tactical. You could put it to work. They had the patterns. They had success stories. They had step-by-step -step guides. And I thought that was fascinating. Red Hat doesn't really do that. We have a lot of great information about open source and we can share with you lots of information about open source, but it's not always as tactical as it needs to be. It's not in step-by-step -step format. And so I thought that we could form a great partnership and come together and share the benefits of open source along with InterSource and how the two can kind of marry together. So the plan was, as we came together with Russ and Guillermo and some others, to focus on transparency and collaboration. We wanted to share what we had and what we needed from each other. And by doing this, we ended up building kind of an inclusive community. We were all had a shared purpose. We were both interested in learning what the other was doing and what the other needed. And so we became a sort of community on our own. And then we wanted to release updates frequently. We don't want to just keep things to ourselves. We want to be able to share things frequently because we know that people need them now. Now's when the questions are. As we looked at our plan, we realized that some of these words seem familiar, at least to me. And that's because there's a connection between inner source and open source that we identified. And that connection really lies within the open source principles. A lot of people talk about the open source principles, but not in the way we do at Red Hat. At Red Hat, we believe that open source principles are more than just about software development. For us at Red Hat, open source principles really are a foundation, and they can help improve any development process. We think that they're more than just a method for making world-class software. We believe that there's a spirit and ethos uh, a way of working, and we actually like to call our open source principles the open source way. And today I'm going to share with you how that open source way can help you to collaborate and to work through a project. But let's start with the open source principles. We focus on five main open source principles. It's transparency, meaning that we all have access to the information and materials that we need to do our best work. Collaboration. When we're free to participate, we can enhance each other's, work, each other's work in unexpected ways. I love being in a group of people when somebody has an idea and I'm like, wow, I never would have thought of that on my own. That to me is what true collaboration is all about. And you see that in community, our third principle. I'm a big proponent of community. I love community. I believe that shared values guide in the decision making and that community goals supersede individual interests and agendas and really help to promote a great idea. We also focus on inclusive inclusiveness. Uh, good ideas can come from anywhere. 
And I think that's so important, especially when you're a newbie to a community or to a company. It's great to know that a good idea can come from you in the same way that it can come from an expert. And also release early, release often. We all know that rapid prototypes can lead to rapid discoveries, and it's a great way to fix bugs quickly. So how did that work with Red Hat and Intersource Commons? Well, first of all would be step one, transparency. During our first calls, we were just sharing opportunities and challenges openly. We were truthful and honest with each other. This is the challenge we face. This is the questions we have. And we sort of did a show and tell to listen and to learn and to grow from each other. What do you have available? What do you do with your, with your content? Where's your documentation stored? And then we began talking about some collaboration opportunities. That was step one. Well, that led us right into step two of collaboration. We reviewed the content that was available and we did uh, started to define gaps. What do we have? What does Red Hat have that maybe Intersource Commons doesn't have but could use? Similarly, what does Intersource Commons have that Red Hat doesn't have? And how could we work together to put those things together and plan for next steps? As we were doing this, I said earlier, we began to form a community. And the community was formed because it was a safe space. We all felt safe talking. We all felt safe sharing. And it was immediately apparent that we were growing together. We also started to determine the ways to work. Are we going to meet every week, every other day? And we had a social contract. Maybe it wasn't written down. It wasn't an official code of conduct. But we all knew how we were going to work and what we were going to share and what our purpose was. We also wanted to start thinking about how, if, and when to add new members. What did that mean and what would that look like to us? That was our introduction to our small little community. We also wanted to think about inclusiveness, step four. We want to encourage contributions from people with diverse backgrounds and experiences. We all work with lots of different people and we know how important it is to include them in our conversations. We wanted to be sure that we avoid discriminatory or exclusionary terms and be mindful of culture or gender sensitive language. And most importantly, we wanted to be open to suggestions and feedback from members or potential members. And finally, release early, release often. How are we going to do that? Well, that would be simple. We would divide the work into smaller, manageable modules so that we'd be able to quickly release content and make it available on the Intersource Commons site or redhat.com. We also wanted to establish feedback mechanisms to collect input early from users. We wanted to know if the information was valuable and if they were using it. And then we want to review the progress and processes often to make sure that we're using the best practices and that we're following those best practices and releasing. Well, that sounds great, Tracy. It sounds like you're on a great path with Intersource Commons and you have a great path ahead for what you're going to do. But well, what's in it for me? Why are you telling me this today? I'm so glad you asked. There's so many benefits to the open source way or using the open source principles. And I want to share just a few of them with you. First of all, it builds strong communities. By making con content transparent, it builds trust and it encourages open communications. You'll hear a lot of people say that they want to destroy silos or break down silos. I don't like that terminology because to me, if you're breaking down a silo, you're getting rid of something. You're getting rid of information. And let's be honest, people are going to build silos. They're going to come together because that's what people do. We don't want to break them down. We want to open them. So I really think we need to change our language and say open silos. By building strong communities, that leads to opening those silos. It also can help reduce the cost of training. I don't know if any of you have experienced this, but I have looked for a document for hours sometimes. I know I've seen it. I know somebody stored it somewhere, but I don't know where. And we have so many places to store things. And I just spend so much time looking for it. Having your content transparent and having transparent and open communication channels like chat rooms, mailing lists, forums where you can go and talk to people and ask questions can help reduce that cost. And it also helps reduce training because now I know where I can go to get an expert. I know where I can go ask questions. It also helps to enhance security. 
Um, lots of times there are bugs and things, and it takes a while to identify them. But if you have transparency and you're sharing your content openly with people, they can quickly find the vulnerabilities. They can quickly make the changes. And so it makes things more secure. It also helps to assist in developing governance models and access controls up front so you don't have as many problems with security down the line. And it fosters rapid innovation. Providing a feedback loop is a great way to identify issues, to gather user insights, and to figure out what's going to work best for your users. Sometimes we think we know what people need, but hearing from them is really the best way. It also helps to foster a culture of continuous innovation. It helps people feel like they're a part of something. And because they feel like they're a part of something, they want to continue to be a part of that. Just like what Guillermo was saying with the belts, that's a great way to help people to continue to be a part of the innovation, to continue to be a part of the conversation. It helps to foster that culture of giving. So I've said a lot today, and I could say a whole lot more. Once I get started talking about the open source way, it's hard to get me to stop. But I do have some more things for you. I have some great resources for you. The open source way is actually available online free to you. There's a link here that you can follow. It's a guidebook. I think it's a little bit academic, and so I strongly recommend that you search it. If you're looking for community, if you're looking for contributions, if you're looking for a particular role, do a search and find it that way. It's a great book, and if you have time to read it all, I strongly recommend reading it. And I have to give a plug to Intersource Commons, who's taught me so much over the last few months. The learning paths are excellent, and we've shared them with our field teams to learn as well. And intersource patterns are phenomenal. I can't wait to help implement something like this at Red Hat uh, with open source. I think that the patterns are a great way to share successes as well as to share how they were used. I think it's just a great tool. Some other sites that I want to share are getting started with contributing because I always like to plug getting involved in an upstream community. Also, open practice library which is kind of similar to the patterns from InnerSource, um, and it focuses mainly on the open source principles. So that's a great resource as well. And finally, the open organization, which can tell you how you can use the open source way in your organization to help make your organization more open. It's also a great resource for making projects more open. So you can pare it down a little bit and not just think about the organization, but about a particular project you're working on as well. Before we leave, I want to give you a call to action because I always feel like I leave presentations and I'm like, okay, now what do I do? I've got lots of information, but what do I do with it? Well, first of all, I want you to share. No, actually, I don't. I want you to use the open source principles. I want you to think about transparency, collaboration, communication, <laughs> community, uh, and inclusiveness, and rapid releasing early, releasing often in all that you do, not just in your projects at work, but in everything that you do with your communities. And I also want to con convince you to participate in upstream communities. You don't have to be a coder to participate. They need people who don't code as much or maybe more than the people who do code. And finally, evangelize InterSource Commons. We have some great things coming with our collaboration with Red Hat, and we would really love it if you would help evangelize InterSource Commons and encourage people to come visit and see what's next. Thank you all very much.